thanks, um, Ken Curler, and welcome the opportunity to speak on the Social Welfare Bill. I just want to pick up where Deputy Neville left off, uh, Minister, in relation to uh, older people, older men in particular, um, who are literally being given no option uh, as companies change models. We see it in the Midlands, but we actually see it all over the country. Um, as, they come, as companies close, as companies restructure, that is the target uh, for redundancy, for early redundancy. And these are people with so much still to give. Um, and I think that there is a need for a special effort. It's actually, we need to talk about it a lot more because it's not talked about enough. Uh, and I support any initiative you would take in that uh, whole area. Um, I think it's something I'd like you to keep under review throughout 2020 is the whole notion of the inability of us to give the full fiver this year because of the no deal Brexit scenario, that should be kept under review. Uh, if it's a situation that we get through uh, 2020 with some sort of a long-term deal in place, that's something that should be worked and uh, looked at again because um, most people will have some small income rises uh, during 2020. As unfortunate, the pensioners and those that still are on social welfare will not see that. I do welcome, and I know you've been committed for some time, to very targeted increases in specific areas. And I think that they will make a difference. And I do want to acknowledge that you have brought a sense of practicality to the role um, in relation to a number of initiatives uh, that wasn't necessarily there on the part of uh, some of your predecessors. Um, and I particularly want to acknowledge, and I know we've had disagreements on this in the past, the role that you have in assessing the pension review, the 2012 changes. Now, we are making some progress, not enough, um, and there are still many people being left short of money that they were expecting at this stage of their life. Um, but you have brought a particular focus to it within the department, and that should be acknowledged. The difficulty, Minister, is that there are a lot of people arriving into that situation now, still unaware that they are uh, being affected by the changes. There are people coming to retirement age now, not realising that that change happened in 2012 and that is now affecting them. And many people are arriving to pension age, budgeting a certain figure and finding that that figure is a lot less. So there's a whole new cohort coming in every year. And they are incredibly frustrated. Uh, they share the frustrations of those who went before them. They took time out for family reasons. They took time out for other reasons. And now uh, to support the state, be that to look after children, be that to look after parents. And now they're being penalised by the state for having done that. Uh, and that's something you need to keep a focus on because I suspect if you weren't in there, your officials would like to hope this goes away. So I do welcome that, but we will keep on your case in relation to that as well. Given the amount of weekly payments has fallen, and given that the numbers are falling, um, I would ask you to look at assigning extra people into appeals. Uh, appeals are running, still looking at six months, nine months at this stage, and it is incredibly difficult uh, for people who may be waiting on that payment. And the notion that they can go to the community welfare service uh, doesn't work for quite a number of them because they may not have access to it, they may not want to do it, or they just may not have the wherewithal to do that. And I think that we need to look at a process um, of maybe addressing particular appeals, be that for carers, be that for domiciliary, that can be done quicker uh, and done more efficiently uh, than currently, is, particularly people who are finding themselves in a difficult situation. Uh, I have a, case, a number of cases where carers are expected to give up their job um, before they get a decision. And then there's a timeline between when they give up the job and they get a decision. Um, and they're left for weeks and often months without an income potentially. So they're not going to make the decision to give up the job. Um, and then what you find is that the person that they want to care for is using general hospitals, using primary care services, when, or maybe even using home help, when somebody is willing and able to actually care for them at home, but because of this restriction of having to give up the job and wait a decision or wait on an appeal. So I'd ask you to look at that and ask you to maybe to look at carers and domiciliary in particular for a specific initiative in relation to um, appeals. Also on carers, um, the move from carers benefit um, into carers assistance, that means that still doesn't look at mortgage payments and still doesn't look at rental payments. And that for so many, is knocking them out uh, of it. Uh, mortgage payments, as we know from housing issue, are a substantial part of people's income. And they don't have a choice in relation to it. They don't have a choice but to pay either that or, or the course of rent. And I think we need to apply flexibility there. Um, and if there was to be a, a particular focus in your department this year, I think it needs to go in on CARES. Because what we, we've done some initiatives and they are welcome and you've increased 
uh, the working allowance this year. I welcome that. But I think too often silos of government, the Department of Health does one thing, your department does another, the Department of Education does another, and there's no coordination between them. And that is a point I make every year. It's not a political point. It's our system is designed to frustrate those who most need the system to help them. Be that carers, be that people, parents with special education needs. Um, and we need to break down those silos and make difficult journeys a lot easier. That's what the system is there for. The state is there to make your difficult journey a lot easier, except we have all these barriers in place, which are really, really aged and stupid and need a practical focus. And, you know, if 2020 were to do anything, is to focus on how can we help our carers? Because the work that they do um, is phenomenal, but the work that they do saves the state so much money in health, in, in so many others, in education. Uh, and I think that the entire state apparatus should come together and all of government focus on carers for 2020 to say, all right, what blockages have we in place that we can take down to make your life, make your journey a little bit easier? Be that carers for older people, be that carers for children with some sort of a special need. Uh, and at least then it shows that the state recognises the role that they are all playing. Minister, we had hoped to bring up um, the issue of CE supervisors. Um, I gather from some correspondence we got on Friday, there seems to be a glitch in the talks. Uh, there seems to be a difficulty. This has been communicated by the unions that information wasn't shared uh, at the appropriate time. I'd appreciate if you could look at that because, again, I know you've taken an interest in that. And, you know, these are people who are doing huge service for the state, supervisors of the CE schemes, who are providing skills, who are passing on talent, who are giving people opportunities that otherwise may not have them, particularly at the moment. And it comes back to that Pliny Neville's piece. Many people in these schemes are people that have been... Uh, who the market, for the want of a better word, has left behind, and we now give them a chance to use their skills and use their talents. But how can you expect supervisors to do that, to be that person, when at the end of their career and at the end of their contribution, all they get is a common state pension that anybody else would get without giving off their time and giving off their talents and giving off their workspace? There is a Labour Court recommendation, there is a Dáil vote, uh, and I know I got a PQ reply from you this morning that you're looking at the WRC recommendation. Um, and again, Minister, I'd ask you to look at that, see what happened last week that led to that communication from the union. I'm conscious of not getting involved in a, uh, a discussion or a negotiation, but this communication came directly from the unions involved. So I'd ask you to look at that. Um, finally, Minister, the area of men's sheds is an area that I know you're very familiar with. Um, they are funded through Minister Ring's department, they're funded through the Department of Health, they're funded through you. I think we need to find a home uh, for them. Um, and given the work they do in terms of skills, in terms of um, supports, in terms of community supports, I actually think the home is your department. Um, and I know you have a lot of people who want housing in your department, but the supports and the skills um, that are provided to men's sheds will do a huge amount of work uh, at keeping people out of the health department, at keeping people um, involved in society, at supporting community. Uh, and many of the people who come off schemes will come into the men's shed. Many people working will come into the men's shed. And I think that there is a role in terms of not employment, but social protection. Men's sheds are doing that in a way that we never envisaged. Men's sheds are doing that in the way the C schemes used to. Uh, and I certainly uh, would encourage you to be proprietorial um, in terms of taking ownership of men's sheds, but making sure that you have and are given the budget to do so. Uh, to allow them to grow to their potential. Gormaldi Concordia.